The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the hosts or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. We're so happy you joined us this week. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's your host, Susan Bartlestone. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. This is the personal safety radio show with an optimistic perspective on a sober subject. I'm your host, Susan Bartlestone. And it is my great pleasure, as always, to spend the next hour with you, helping you keep yourself safe. Just a quick reminder, it's still Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Crime Prevention Awareness Month. So there's still time for you to get involved and recommit to local groups in your area that are working to end all this madness. And I'll be posting safety tips and resources on both topics uh, on my blog site, Crime Prevention 101, so you can check for them from time to time if you like. Now, today's program focuses on the healing odyssey of crime survivors, and I'll be speaking with some very inspiring people about their struggles with the consequences of domestic violence, sexual assault, and trauma of any kind. And these are people who've used a combination of traditional and non-traditional healing methods. And uh, I, well, that's one of my missions on this show, is to expand your knowledge about the non-traditional methods that, that can be used to help you repair your soul. Now, first off, I'll be talking with George Robertson and some of the folks from a wonderful online forum called Healing Through Creativity. And this is the second program that I've done with them. They are all about healing with the support of others through creative pursuits such as painting or poetry or writing or journaling or filmmaking and just a whole variety of the arts. Now, I I pre-recorded this segment at their annual Healing Through Creativity Survivor Art Festival, which was held October 17th through the 24th at the Heart of Virginia Foundation for the Integrated Arts. And this was in Roanoke, Virginia. And I... Did, I recorded their conference last year, and it was just wonderful talking to the people and hearing the things that they've done to help themselves heal. In the second segment of the show, you're going to meet sexual assault survivor Gina Catronio, who was recently featured on the TV show The Shark Tank. And this is where I found out about her. And you'll hear how she went from survivor to thriver through determination, and through business passion. So another non-traditional means to heal. And be sure and stay tuned for some tips for healing that came from survivors to survivors. Now today's show is a particularly important one for people who are trauma survivors for whatever the cause. So please, if you know someone who might benefit from a show like this, send out a text message about us, Send out an IM or a tweet if you're on Twitter, anything, so that they can join us too. George, welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Now, on your website, healingthroughcreativity.org, you say, Healing through creativity helps to end the need for silence, the feelings of abandonment, and the undeserved guilt often felt by survivors. Please tell me a little bit about yourself and how Healing Through Creativity came about? Uh, I I was, uh, basically, I I, uh, was attacked and, uh, you know, had no idea that was coming or anything like that. That kind of changed my life. My my first uh, thought was to hide it and go on like nothing would ever happen. And, uh, I don't know, I didn't realize that that really was not 
uh, possible. But I found, too, that uh, people that go through things oftentimes take the guilt on themselves and uh, the blame and so forth that's undeserved. And uh, when you finally speak up about what's happened, you set yourself free from that. A lot of times you turn it around, but you also find um, you know, a lot of things within yourself that were there all along that you really didn't realize. And uh, so there are, I mean, actually through traumatic things, a lot of times there are uh, important steps that you take that are very valuable and that you wish that you could have had um, without going through that. But, yeah, without having the trauma right. of an attack, absolutely. Right. So where did where did you get the idea for healing through creativity? And actually, where did the title come from also? Okay, the, the title, uh, I'm really glad to say, uh, came from uh, After Silence, which is a message board uh, on uh, the internet and it's called After Silence and uh, basically that's for for um, survivors of sexual assault and uh, so forth. Uh, we we open it up to uh, any trauma uh, which kind of just broadens it but it's the same idea. And this is a great fa- I just want to mention that website also it's aftersilence.org and I'm going to be posting links to all the website Healing through creativity dot org and after the silence. I'm going to have all those links on the the show notes for this show. So don't worry, people are going to be able to find it. And uh, they came oh. up with the idea of healing through creativity, using creativity as a way to repair your soul. Correct. Right. Um. There, I mean, there are many different forms. Healing through creativity, uh, we realize that we have to be open to all all media and so forth. And really, the the idea for it came from being excluded. Uh, you know, for example, you know, sometimes they have events that are just for men, just for women, just for a particular type of trauma or something like that. And then there's nothing around for anyone else. Also, some charge uh, money to get in, and depending on the amount, that excludes some people. So uh, we realize that this has to be uh, free, and, you know, that way we we really don't exclude anyone. Uh, The other thing that we do a little bit, well, it's different than some, is that we, we're not looking for Picasso. If someone has something that should be expressed, they need to do it, and we don't really need to uh, judge their works or award a prize for, you know, something that's really good, too. Right. You know, but exactly. Please. It's not a competition. This is, this is a, just a place to, to express. Right. And, and how, what, kind, what uh, ways do you express your creativity? Well, mine is through music. Now, you, you're coming to me today through the, the annual Healing Through Creativity Festival. Now, how did, how did that get started and why? Uh, well, actually, that's uh, one of the... <laughs> uh, let me get myself straightened out here. But... Um, it originated in um, Hurricane, West Virginia, which is near Charleston, and more as a reaction to seeing people be excluded uh, from activities, uh, you know, where they can express and so forth. It took a little bit over a year to uh, put together the first uh, festival, and it was the entire month of July in 2006, and uh, that's where it uh, began. And the idea of the festival is for survivors to come together to perform, to display their work, right, to attend workshops, listen to speakers in a very friendly and supportive environment. That's correct. I think that is an an amazing idea. And you've been doing this since 2006. That, over the years, how many attendees do you think you've had at, at these festivals? Um, 
It varies uh, from year to year, but uh, last year was probably the largest. We had uh, probably in excess of 2,000 uh, people come and uh, view the exhibits and be part of it. And I I was looking over the schedule. Uh, Now, you had some very interesting workshops there. Give me an idea of some of the ones that you've got that people can attend. Okay. uh, Well, for today, Today, uh, we've just finished one, uh, which was uh, a book uh, presentation on surviving cancer and other tough stuff. Let's see, Creative Journaling is coming up uh, today, and then we'll also have a presentation on uh, disassociative disorder, and uh, let's see, using various media to tell your story, to say what's happened. And uh, some of the other uh, things coming up will be on uh, forgiving uh, to heal, which is also a journaling uh, workshop, really, and also in uh, that person delves into poetry. Now, George, how can people find out about the next Healing Through Creativity Festival or um, other events that are similar to this? Okay, uh, by participating through the uh, website, uh, which is uh, just www.healingthroughcreativity.org, uh, um, you, you can find out when the next uh, teleconference and meetings are. You can also share your ideas, send in information about what you would like to do. If you would like to have uh, an event in your area, uh, that's possible. It doesn't have to be just one location. It can be multiple locations. And, uh, you know, our website can uh, publicize this for, for others and be of a help that way. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, this kind of take off all over the country. You know, it, you, uh, good, uh, it, just wonderful to have these places that survivors of anything can come and, and just, you know, be and, and express and, you know, be supported. Well, George, thank you so much for speaking with me today. We're going to, have, we're going to be talking now to uh, one of the conference attendees. So who do we have? This is uh, Marie Coppola. Hi, Marie. This is Susan Bartlestone from Crime Prevention 101. And uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, yourself and uh, how you in, got to the, the festival and what uh, you're experiencing from it. Uh, basically, I got involved with uh, Healing Through Creativity after I, I had wrote, written my book mm-hmm. about uh, uh, surviving, you know, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, you name it, we got it. What, what's the name of the book? Uh, it's called Breaking the Silence, a Survivor Story. It's uh, available on Amazon. And, uh, I'm, sorry? I'm sorry, Breaking, breaking the Silence... A survivor's story. Okay. And on Amazon. And uh, this is from your own personal experiences? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, how the book came about is that I had a, a major triggering event back in 2005. And I came to the point that I said, I've had enough. So basically, I just sat down, took my notebook, sat down, and wrote all of my angry in hurt, enraged feelings, and then sat there and brought them together, and they came about in the form of a book. And and then you found uh, healing through creativity. Uh, actually, actually, it was by accident. Uh, I was, you know, just doing some web web surfing, looking for online support groups because at this time I can't afford uh, a therapy, so I found Voices of Strength. Uh, then I also found Healing Through Creativity, and I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is something that will meet my needs. It's, you know, I'm in the middle of the healing process, and, you know, I'm, I'm an artist, so it was uh, quite appropriate that I got involved with uh, Healing Through Creativity. It's, uh, it's been very helpful and supportive in, in helping me to continue the healing process. And how are you finding the festival? Uh, actually, it's, it's wonderful. I'm meeting a lot of wonderful people, even people I've met online. So it's, uh, it's just great because we're all in it together and we're working for the same common goal. Fantastic. 
Well, I thank you so much for speaking with me today. I really no appreciate problem. it. Uh, uh, no problem. <laughs> I want everybody to know that uh, there are other other outlets for for healing available, rather than just uh, you know traditional therapy and so forth. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I like to feature organizations like uh, Healing Through Creativity. So I thank you so much. And I appreciate you speaking with me today. So, uh, Heather Pate. Okay, we've got one more. Heather. Hi, Heather. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. I'm Susan Bartlestone. How are you doing today? Doing good. And how, how did, what brought you to the Healing Through Creativity Festival? Um, I have uh, trauma in my past, and uh, I also have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, and I was out searching for websites that might support and found Healing Through Creativity. And it's been a wonderful support group. And what creative uh, path do you take? Um, I do YouTube videos. Really? Yes, I do. Um, my how, can, how can we find you on YouTube? Uh, just type in, in the search, Secret Oompa. Secret S E S E C R E T O O M P A A, and all my videos will pop up. Oh, great! And what kind of, of videos are they? They are mainly. Um, I have one child abuse awareness video, uh, which currently is down, but um, the rest of them are presentations or talks about dissociative identity disorder and what that is. Interesting. And how are you finding the conference? It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. They should be playing some of those videos there. I hope they are. Uh, Well, I'll be giving a presentation at two, um, showing a movie uh, called You're Not Crazy and You're Not Alone. And... That's also involving DID, and uh, I'm going to be showing one of my videos there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for Mm -hmm. stopping by and chatting with me. I appreciate it so much. You can find out more information about the Healing Through Creativity organization from their website, healingthroughcreativity.org. Coming up next, meet business entrepreneur and survivor, Sheena Catronio, and hear her unique story of healing. Don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and there's plenty of show left to tune in. So start Twittering about us. Let's get that tweet going. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your question. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com.
You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Susan would like to remind you that no absolutes exist in a crime scenario and no advice can possibly address every variable. Each situation should be evaluated individually and responded to in a way you instinctively judge best. It's Susan's aim on this show to provide you with the information and options that will help you make that instinctive assessment quickly and safely. And if you're already a survivor of the kind of crime we're talking about on the show today, or any other crime for that matter, please remember that there are no right or wrong responses in a criminal encounter, and nothing that happened to you was your fault. Even if you think you used bad judgment in a situation and left yourself vulnerable, that's never an excuse for a crime or for violence. So please, call yourself a survivor, not a victim, and understand that with time, distance, and the proper professional help, you can put what happened into perspective perspective and get on with your life. If you'd like to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, send your comments to solutions at fightsafe.com and Susan may address some of them on future shows. That email address again, solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone here. Welcome back to Crime Prevention 101. We're going to talk more about healing with Gina Catronio sexual assault survivor, and survivor of the Shark Tank show, TV show. But before we talk with Gina, I just have to tell you about my friends at MyMobileWitness.com. This is an amazing uh, organization. This is a way to turn your cell phone, your camera cell phone, into a personal safety device. If you're in a stalking situation, if you're in a domestic violence situation, if you have an order of protection against somebody, if you're going out on a blind date, if you're in a, a, a if you're in an occupation where you might sus- uh, be subject to danger, any dangerous situation at all, you're going to want to find out about mymobilewitness.com, and that's where you go to find out about them. Mymobilewitness.com. Sexual assault survivor Gina Catronio's last words to her rapist Gary Faison at his sentencing were. When you raped me on that morning of June 19, 1997, you took a piece of my soul with you, a piece that I've been grieving and missing and wandering around without for two years. As I'm standing here looking in your eyes, I take it back for me, and I've spent about enough of my time on you. These are the warrior words of encouragement, of courage, and empowerment for sure. Gina's told her inspiring story on many TV shows, including Oprah, who said of her, she tapped into the kind of power that can never be taken away, and she bravely faced the sharks on the Shark Tank show, who hopefully unwisely turned down her request for money to invest in her new company. And Gina, I'd have given you that money. So welcome. Thank you so much, Susan. I wish you were on the panel. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I was there, too. I think they made a big mistake, but you survived that too. So let's anyway. Let's let's start out by talking about what happened to you in 1997. Well, I was living in Dallas, uh, which I still live in, different part of town, and um, had gone to bed for the evening and awoke to the sound of my door being slammed. And at first I thought uh, just for a split second that it was my boyfriend, um, but then I realized I hadn't ever given him a key. And in that moment I faced basically, I think, a lot of women's worst fear coming true. Mm, Sure. And it was indeed your worst nightmare, right? Well... I I can honestly say it's the most difficult thing that's ever happened to me uh, in my entire life. Um, That said, I don't really really call it a negative thing or even a bad thing because so much good has come out of it that I I just, you know, I don't look back on it and say, oh, that was a bad thing, but I can certainly say it really was a difficult one. It was a a pretty awful story, too. I mean... Uh, he, you were, in addition to the rape, you were locked in a closet. Um, there was there was all sorts of of unpleasant stuff going on. Um, he, he did get sentenced to jail. How, how long a jail sentence did he get? Well, he was tri- he was tried for a crime against another woman, 
before he was tried uh, by the state of Texas for the crime against me, he received 90 years for that first crime, and he received a life life sentence after he was found guilty of sexually assaulting me. So he he will not be eligible for parole for 60 years, and he was 35 years old when he went into prison. So I'm thinking he's not going to make it out. Good. Good. (laughs) Well, you know, honestly... Honestly, you know, th- this is a good thing for him, too, because, um, you know, this prevents him from committing any more negative acts against people. You know, uh, in, in the punishment phase of the trial, there were several people from his community, from his church. He was very involved in his church. I honestly think somewhere he knew what he was doing was wrong. I think somewhere mm-hmm. inside his soul he knew what he was doing was wrong, and, um, you know, I think, in a, on a very deep level, wanted to be caught and stopped. Well, I'm glad he's got a long time to ponder this, too. I'm a long time away from society. Yeah. Well, there was, an, there was an article that came out uh, a few years after he was in prison where he ascertains his innocence and, um, you know, so who knows, but... I, I mean, personally, I can't imagine what it what it would be like to, you know, mentally just be in prison. But um, well, but I'm not out there that, hurting people, so I won't find out. <laughs> in, in terms of of his supposed innocence, you did something quite extraordinary in terms of collecting DNA evidence against this fellow. Uh, can well, you well, talk a little bit about he, that, uh, and that turned out to be crucial in convicting him and his innocence. You yes, about what that's you true. Um, well, when he, the last thing he did before he left my apartment was force me to f- perform oral sex on him. And he then shoved me in a closet, and I saved his semen under my tongue and in my mouth and waited to listen for the sounds of him leaving and then went into my kitchen and, you know, spit it into a plastic baggie for the police. And they were absolutely stunned over that. In fact, I've... I'm known as the baggy girl at the Dallas County Courthouse. <laughs> oh, dear. And this, well, you know what? It was one of the things that got people interested in telling the story. And for me, um, just in the in the sort of, sort of larger life sense purpose, it was an extraordinary detail that became a, sort of a, a way to get people interested so that I would have an opportunity to talk about positivity uh, as a life platform, you know, working with positive thoughts and positive actions. This was something I was doing before the rape. It wasn't mm-hmm. like I was raped and then all of a sudden I became a positive person, you know, but it, what it was, it was a really big test. You know, I was able to really test my theories of positivity and do they work. Um, you know, the, the rape was sort of a proving ground for that. And you actually, you were, you were um, working on becoming a motivational speaker, and uh, I remember in an interview you talked about a guardian angel whose picture hung on your wall, and that this somehow figured in. But I, before we pick that, pick that up, I just want to go back to the forethought that you had in terms of preserving the evidence. And that's, that really was critical in convicting this person, and it's really important um, for other survivors to know that, you know, this is, this is something you want to think about. The first thing that you might want to do is wash yourself off or clean yourself up. And if you do that, you are just, you know, removing some of the evidence that could convict somebody. So it's, it's just something to, to note. And this was in, incredibly, um, quick thinking of you and really amazing. And I kind of applaud you for that. Well, thanks. I think, you know, after the initial fear and realization of, of of what was about to happen to me, it was like my brain switched over into survival mode and I became extremely logical. I was listening, trying to hear the sound of his voice, uh, trying to peek. He had me cover my eyes with my hands. He wasn't wearing a mask. I was trying to peek through my eyes to get a look at some details of him um, trying to, you know, ascertain what his weight was. Uh, you know, it was weird. It was, it was a survival mode, I think, that I just got into. And, um, 
you know, that, that really helped me. I know a lot of people react in different ways, and I guess, you know, sure. we all think about what we would do if that ever happened to us, and I always thought that I would fight back, and I did not. I mean, this person weighed 300 pounds. This guy was six mm-hmm. foot one and weighed 300 pounds. I'm 5'2", and, and at the time weighed a, around 110. And um, I think I made the right decision. You know, I mean, I'm here. He's in jail. Uh, the amount of injury I sustained, I think, would have been a lot greater. But, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know that you could ever be mentally prepared for that kind of thing, but um, well, what I found out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I know yeah. you could think about what you might do, or, you know, if you've taken a self-defense class, um, mm-hmm. you know, there might be physical things, but every situation is going to be different. Absolutely. Um, and there really are no should-haves and could have There's no right or wrong no. responses. No matter, even if you have, you know, and I'm very highly trained, and even, and it's something I uh, say for me, too, uh, you only do what you think is going to save your life in that situation and not what you right. think is expected of you. Uh, we do like to say that there are things you can do to prepare yourself for, the, for these kind of situations, but you never have to do anything except what you need to do to save your life, and you're the only one that can judge that. You know, and, 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 and that's, that's just the bottom line. And you also never look back and say, I should have fought or I should have done this oh, or I yeah. should have done that. Absolutely not, because it'll wreck your, your confidence. And I did not feel that way. I didn't feel like what happened to me was my fault. Um, you know, of course, though, my case was a lot clearer. You know, I, I've met a lot of sexual assault survivors, you know, since this has happened to me. And, you know, I've done some public speaking and public service uh, around this issue. And, um, you know, date rape, I... I feel for people who have been date raped because, you know, the line, the line was very clear cut for me. This is a person that I don't know breaking into my house in the middle of the night. There's no, sure. you know, whatever. But the more we all talk about this, I mean, there is never, ever a reason for a man or a woman to do that to another man or a woman. There just is never a reason. And, um, you know, the more we talk about this, the better that gets and the more women understand that, Uh, especially young women. You know, I mean, I was almost 30 years old when this happened to me. So, you know, when you're that age, you have a little bit more of a sense of yourself and and more confidence. I didn't didn't have any regrets about what I felt like I should or shouldn't have done. And, you know, I was able to help heal myself and use that strength to heal myself. So... And we're going to talk about uh, the things that you did um, in your healing journey, but I want to reinforce that point. It, no matter you know, no matter what you think you might have done, and, and when you talk about date rape, especially situations or situations where you know this person, it is it, your the fault is never the victim. The fault is the person who did it to you. That's the person who is responsible for it. Even if you did something that you think was stupid, like dating situations. Sometimes we do things that right, maybe make right. us more vulnerable than we would like to have been. It's still, that's not an excuse for the violence. All right, Gina, let's, we're going to be right back with, with more, and we're going to talk about um, your business, also Souls Calling, which has okay. a very special mission. And you can mm-hmm. find out more information about Gina at her website, soulscalling.com. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We're back. Just a quick reminder, you can join us online at mycrimeprevention101.com blog site. 
where you can get more information about my wonderful guests and show topics and listen to the show again if you like. You can get on my mailing list from there, or you can sign up to receive the show as a podcast. So check out CrimeDimension101.com. We're talking with Gina Catronio, a sexual assault survivor and now thriver. And let's talk about some of the things that uh, that turned the, the corner for you in terms of healing. Now, you talked about a guardian angel uh, whose picture was, had hung on your wall. You also talked about your philosophy of positivity before this. Talk about those things and how they figured in with the, the healing process. Well, I think that when you live your life with with faith in in some type of higher power, whether that's a, a, just a general universal thing or a very specific religious thing, I feel like it, it, it kind of, for me, it gave me a base, you know, and the belief that all things happen for a reason. If I didn't believe that, I think I would have had a, a much harder time, like, integrating this experience into my life. And I started with this belief that all things happen for a reason, and I started looking for reasons. Not why did this happen to me, but in a larger sense of what is this about? You know, what, if, this, if every experience in your life is a teacher, then what is this teacher trying to show me? What can I learn from this? And looking at that, kind of reframing your experiences that way um, allows you to access uh, many more positive things. Because if you just look for, you know, why me, why did this happen to poor me, you know, you're never going to figure out why um, a particular person chose to, you know, come into your life and, and, you know, do something like this to you. You can spend an awful lot of time in that trench without really getting anywhere and without empowering yourself. But when you start to look for, okay, what is... What is the gift in this? This looks really horrible, and this looks like something that is in really terrible wrapping paper. But if I take off that wrapping paper, what gift is it, you know, what gift is in there for me? And for me, I mean, I can't even tell you the amount, the amount of goodness that I have been able to um, open myself up to and bring into my life by merely changing the way that I looked at this. And that's Fantastic. something that's accessible to everybody. You also said that um, in an interview, you said, it, it's my belief that you are a holistic being, not just a body, not just a mind, not just a spirit. You are all these things, and the trauma happened to all three. So I sought healing on all those levels. Now talk about some of the things that you did to get to the point where you can say, no matter how horrible it looks, this was still a gift to me. What did you do to get to that place, healing all those three levels? Well, I, I did anything that I could think of. Um, I did regular talk therapy. I did acupressure. I did EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing techniques. I did and that, an American- by the way, that's a, I did a show that and that's an amazing it's a it's an alternative to regular talk therapy it's a great um technique for many people i think that that technique was not super well known at the time but he's becoming much more well known um it was sort of on the fringes of the regular kind of psychological uh community but you know I'm a creative person. I don't, I don't care where it comes from or how wacky it seems. If it works and I feel like it's helping me, then I'm going to try it. I mean, I did an American Indian healing ceremony. Uh, so just, I did just, one, just one, quick, one quick thing about EMDR. EMDR is now recognized by the, uh, the American Psychiatric Association, and it's covered on most insurance plans. I think that's great because it's it was a phenomenal, a long way. It is and a phenomenal fact, tool. In the show notes for this show, I'm going to also post a link to that show that I did about the EMDR because, uh, as you said, I think it's really uh, it's, it's a very uh, powerful healing technique that many people don't know about. Now, well, I did Indians, I did not have post traumatic stress disorder thanks to the thanks to that technique. Yeah, exactly, and it stands for eye movement desensitization reprocessing. 
And it's, it's, it's quite a, 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 an amazing and simple and quick. It's, very, it, it, it's much quicker than a traditional kind of uh, therapy process. Get that I, stuff really I found it. I found it to be for sure. And um, I also I did uh, an American, uh, American Indian healing ceremony. Uh, I did about that because I'm not familiar with that. I have a friend who is a Cherokee Indian, and um, they basically use they burn herbs, and the smoke from the herbs uh, is meant to kind of cleanse uh, the spirit and cleanse negativity from you. And they use uh, animal feathers to kind of you know waft the the um, the smoke from the burning herbs around you, and you know. My friend is, is uh, you know, very much into American Indian religion, and that's a form of religion that I deeply respect. And, mm-hmm. you know, she offered to do the healing. And, um, you know, I felt like it helped me. And uh, I also did rolfing, uh, which is, it's called postural integration. It's a series of physical, it's not quite massage, but it's a series of, um deep physical kind of tissue and fascia manipulation. And um, because I felt like uh, when this trauma happened to my body that my muscles were holding the the memory of it. Mm -hmm. And so I went to release that. I also did something called EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. Um, There's a guy in Dallas, luckily enough, named Stephen Vasquez, Dr. Stephen Vasquez, And he has pioneered this technique. It's similar to EMDR in that it uses your right and left brain, but it uses a series of colored and flashing lights. And I'm an artist, so I took to the colored light thing like a duck to water. And, um, you know, I'll still go in every every five years or so, you know, kind of for a Mm tune-up, I guess. Um, I feel like... I'm very familiar with EFT. In fact, just last week I did my second show on healing from traumas of all kinds with EFT. And uh, I'm going to post links to that, too, because I, I, I think uh, while, while that is less known or, or less, less recognized by the medical society than EMDR training, it is... Um, it is and, and can be very powerful. So I'm going to post the links to the EFT show as well on, on uh, my blog site here when I post the show notes. So that's, and you th- I guess you think all of these things together really g- gave back that positive attitude to you that you had. I, you know, I have to say that I, I would like what I've been through to be an example of the type of healing that can occur because, um, you know, like I said, I meet a lot of other rape survivors and they don't, they don't, they're not living the way that I'm living. And I feel like this happened for a reason as well. And that reason is to inspire people and to let them know that you could have something like this happen to you and, and thrive and live an even better life. Not just, well, I get through the days and, you know, I'll never forget it. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I want people to know that. I want people to know that not only can you heal and survive, but but you can fly and thrive and, and be tremendously happy because I don't think that there, that's really out there in, in the general belief. Right. That's why I, I had to have you on the show. Now, let's talk about the thriving, all right? At the time that the, uh, that the assault occurred, you were in the advertising business. Now, let's talk about soul's calling. and we're, 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 We'll get uh, just a couple minutes in before we take a pause, and then we'll pick up. Talk about Soul's Calling. Well, when, when the rape happened and the story became very public and, you know, after being on Oprah's show, um, I really started to see how the telling of the story, it, you know, this rape just, it didn't happen to just me. It happened to my friends, my family, my coworkers, my community. Millions of women were affected by what this one person did to me. And I saw a mechanism in that, and I saw an opportunity to change the world for the better. And so all these ideas for products with 
with positive words on them and spreading things out using everyday objects with positive messages on them was really born out of, out of that epiphany for me. And that's why I named it Soul's Calling. And what kind of products do you have in Soul's Calling? And it's soulscalling.com, correct? Yeah, it's souls, plural. Soulscalling.com is her website. What kind of products do you have? Um, well, it's a gift and accessory line. I do umbrellas with positive messages on them. They're called Inspirellas. I do uh, flip-flops. Inspirellas, I ones. love that. I love that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. It's a really... Um, it's a, it's a really uh, fanciful word and um, a really bright and happy product. I also do um, a little bracelet. It's, it's kind of a translucent uh, plastic, and it comes in two pieces, and the pieces snap together, and each piece says, we are all connected. And I think this mm-hmm. is such a powerful idea, and it really is sort of at the crux of, of Soul's Calling, this idea that you know, we're all in this world together, and every action, every word that we have, whether that's positive or negative, spreads out like a ripple. Absolutely. So, Gina, hang on, hang in with me here. This is okay. Crime Prevention 101. We'll be right back with more inspiring conversation with Gina Catronio. I've got some great resources on healing for you. Also, some tips if I can... Get them in, otherwise I'm posting them. Don't forget to check out Gina Catronio at her website, soulscalling.com. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain inspired really fast. All the time. The number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. This is Susan Bartlestone. Just wanted to point out that Crime Prevention 101 is available on iTunes. You don't even have to be at your computer to listen to us. Welcome back. Talking with Gina Catronio. Hi, Gina. Hi, Susan. All right, we're coming down the wire here. One one of the things that that we, we talked about souls calling, and one of the things that I thought was so interesting about uh, the products is that. You talk about something called positive energy transfer, which is part of the Souls Calling brand and merchandise. Talk about what that is. Well, I believe that objects hold the spirit or the energy, if you will, of the people that make them and deal with them. So in addition to the positive message that's on the product, I wanted to basically put my loving energy into it. So I go down to my warehouse, which which is my garage at this point, and I pray and chant and I imbue my products with loving energy. Um, I hug the boxes and the packages before they ship out. And I also make formal requests of all the factories that I deal with that make my product for them to put their most positive energy into the product as well. And, you know, I know I can't control what what kind of mood they're in that day or whatever, but I think becoming aware of the intent is is an important part of the product. And um, I'm hoping that when people wear the product and receive the product that they feel that. They feel that energy and then they soak it up and it gets passed on to the next person because, you know, like I said, we're all connected and, and our energy affects one another. So, you know, why not have that be in the most positive way possible? I think that's fantastic. You want to actually raise the consciousness of the world, as you say, and and make it a better place. And I thought uh, I thought these these products were adorable. There were some there's a little sandals that you have that leave a message behind. Remember yeah, they those? leave a message. The soul seekers leave a message in the sand when you walk. Um, and I love that idea because. You're sort of spreading, um, you know, spreading the words out to the general population, and you just never know who's going to be walking by, and they're going to see the words, 
and that it's going to have meaning for them and it's going to brighten their day and, you know, bring a smile to their face. It's a really, that's a really powerful idea. I agree. And, and I, I just couldn't believe that, that, that the shark tank didn't, didn't want to invest in this. What, what was your experience like on the shark, t- shark tank? Well, you know, after the rape, facing a bunch of sharks was nothing. I mean, really, you know, really, it just, I thought to myself, what's the worst they could do, say no? You know, I mean, I, I did not go into the show knowing whether I would get money or not, but I just didn't see a downside to it. Oh, no, no. And was, let, let me just explain for, the, for uh, those in my audience that don't know, the Shark Tank is uh, like four or five people. You, they have entrepreneurs come on and present their business, and you talk to them about having them invest in the business. And, they, they, and they, um, if, they, if they kind of favor the idea of what you're doing, you get not only their money but their business expertise. And it's, it's called the Shark Tank, and it's actually a takeoff on a British show that I am totally devoted to called The Dragon's Den. So they... They kind of changed the name a little bit, but uh, how did you get involved with that? And, and um, has good what positive has come out of it? I know that it's it's not anywhere near like what happened with the, your assault, but I know well, it they actually been, uh, they actually talking. found me. I get, I was emailed by a producer uh, that that works for Mark Burnett, and I think they might have found me online or um, through some type of search or whatever, but. They found me, and I and I just thought, well, you know, this is something I've never done before. It'll it'll certainly be a unique experience that I can I can add to my life box of experiences. And, yeah, <laughs> you know, like I said, even if I don't get if I do get money, great, the company is totally on its way. If I don't get money, there's a lot of publicity, and I now have a, a platform of several million people to um, spread more positivity to. So. I saw the opportunity in that, and um, you know they're a tough bunch. They're a tough bunch, yeah. but it, it, the problem really for them is that I'm too small. I just don't have enough sales for them to be interested. But they were delighted by the product, and um, they were. You no, know, they could feel my passion for it. And anybody who meets me or talks to me or or even gets online, you know, I think they feel the passion that I have for this. I received literally thousands of emails from people. Um, That's of encouragement great. and and it, it just I'm gonna I, I've printed them all out I've, I've killed several trees printing them all out <laughs> in a book um, because I'm going to save them and and make sure that I look at them when I'm having those you know entrepreneur days going why am I doing this you know which mm-hmm. every entrepreneur mm-hmm. has but well I hope um, Crime Prevention 101 in my little small way can help out souls calling a little bit too. Thanks, thanks. I'm I'm so glad to be uh, to be a part of your show. Oh, my pleasure. Let's 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 end our little conversation. What are your plans for the future now? In addition to Souls Calling, you got a book coming out. Anything that you'd like to accomplish? Real quick. Well, you know, I really uh, the main goal for me is to get the products um, out there on a national level, so that. Everyone has access to the ideas. I have so many ideas for new things. And just get the tools out there and, and go out and do my thing with people and, you know, go talk to people about the products. I'd love to start doing, you know, seminars and positivity-related uh, uh, community events in relation to the product. Well, I'd love to see a book come out of this, too, because I think that uh, like you said, your your healing process has has been very uh, inspiring, and I'd like to see more people to you know have access to what you got. So, Gina, thank you so much for being on Crime Prevention 101 today with me. Thank I'm you, Susan. Be- Here here's a phone hug for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm going to have to buy one of those connectivity bracelets too. I think. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I'm I'm going to put uh, links to your website on my show. I've also uh, done several past shows on uh, alternative methods of healing, and I'm going to put links to the uh, the uh, EMDR show <clears throat> and the uh, the two EFT shows. Um, we're coming down to the to the wire today, so. 
I just uh, want to thank everyone for the wonderful comments that you send me. Please continue to send me your comments. I'm so grateful for them. And that way I can continue to present topics and resources that will be meaningful to your safety and to your quality of life. You can email me, solutions at fightsafe.com. Next week, I'll be uh, closing out Domestic Violence Awareness Month with an interview with domestic violence survivor Lorena Bobbitt. Yes, that Lorena Bobbitt. After 16 long years of silence, she's doing media appearances in order to raise money for her Domestic Violence Prevention Foundation. We're going to talk about that fateful night, her first reunion since the trial with her former husband, John Wayne Bobbitt, and what happened when they came face-to-face. And lots more. You're not going to want to miss this show. In fact, it would be a crime not to listen. So stay tuned and stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guest, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimeprevention101.com today. Have a great week and a safe week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the hosts or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by Voice America Talk Radio Network its staff and management.